Welcome to The Advocate, your Sunday reminder that important conversations are among the necessary tools for a saner society. I'll be talking on climate change is not foreign affairs. Hussein Olari Waju will be talking about business opportunities and sustainability in Nigeria, a case of mobile money. Oluwa Shegun Elegbede will be talking about seeking for daily bread in the POS business. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. The scenes of devastation from flooding are all around us now. The house almost covered to the rooftop in water, the car submerged, furniture floating along to nowhere, canoes plying major residential zones across the country, taken over by rivers of flood. At the bottom of all this is the impact of climate change. It is even said that this is just a foretaste of what is to come. The current tragedy joins others, such as the increasing desertification of the Sahel, which is expanding rapidly into the northern reaches of the nation, leading to a crisis of availability of water and even open conflict. The Boko Haram insurgency and others like it flourish in the shadow of all this. As we approach the coming election, presidential candidates have been confronted by the press and others with the issue of climate change. The common reaction is that it is not our problem, that it is the problem of the West who wants to prevent us from industrializing and that nothing can be done by us if there is no funding from the West. All these are red areas. Climate change is with us, affecting us, our relatives, our people. We call upon our politicians, particularly presidential candidates, to pay serious attention to putting forward plans to deal with the impact of the scourge that our people are daily experiencing. It is noteworthy that until recently, none of the presidential candidates visited any of the communities afflicted by the flooding to commiserate with them. It is beyond sad. Olari Waju. <laughs> so, I want to look at this from two perspectives, right? So I will break it down to the people and the government. And from what you said, right, you look at government in the local aspect and in the foreign aspect. So I will start from the foreign so that I, I can come back to the local. For the foreign, if you look at the, uh, the international climate change law, it might not be applicable to our uh, adaptation to our country at the moment because we are not there yet. There are some clauses, just like what one of the presidential candidates says, you cannot poison anointed oil or something like that, you know, only communion for a rat to come and it's just like you want to kill. So the, the statement is actually for a foreign aspect of climate change. So if a condition is saying stop the production of coal, stop this, which, what is the major source of revenue for Nigeria? It's still the gas, the fuel and stuff. We are asking them to stop. What alternative? So what, what you are trying to tell us that in bid for us to move to be more dependent, uh, independent, you're asking us to continue depending on you. It, it is not done anywhere, right? So we are far from it. So that is not something just like you want to poison us in our own way. We, we know that this thing is not good for us. So that is on that part. Nevertheless, when you look at it in a local aspect in government, we also need to look at government enforcing one, orientating aggressively the populace, the, the citizen. Now you have people who are doing uh, building houses that are building houses on road network. They are, they, are, they are not following the standard plans. You have town planning saying stop work here, do this, and people are still doing it. There are no proper drainages, right? And when there is, uh, even before, uh, leaving aside the, the dam, what have you, even if there is heavy rain pour, you see a lot of water on the road. But when the water comes up, what is it coming up with? With debts, with all our bottles, linons, things that we use because we, we don't actually take cognizance of these that are blocking the drainages that we have. There are some houses that they will build. They will build that I want to occupy all my land. Places that you need to put drainage, even inside streets, people don't care. Do you understand? So, the government has to, first of all, Educate the citizen aggressively. We have not been seeing National Orientation Center doing a lot of awareness. 
that they are expected to do. Then, aside that, we the citizen also need to abide. It's not only when you you occupy all the road or you take your uh, wastage and put it inside drainage. And we need to take responsibility. That's from my own side. Yeah. Before I come back, the, it, it is the electionary campaign, and it is good that this is coming to the fore. And we have all asked for issue-based campaign, and then it is good that this is coming as a litmus test for all the presidential candidates. Many of them, in your submission, you said how many of them have even taken time to visit these ravaged zones to see, to see, I mean, the damages and also commiserates. And I mean, it, whatever you are offering us or you are planning to offer us, I mean, we should begin to see signs of this now in terms of how you react, in terms of the policy that you plan on giving towards ensuring that this uh, flooding is, is combated. The last time we had um, such a flooding is in 2012, if I, if I recall. And then, I mean, this year's 31 states out of the 36 states are already flooded. I mean, it is really devastating. And then we need to now see the human side of all our presidential candidates. At some point, they need to also halt the campaigns. I mean, how do they even want to go about the campaigns if they cannot even get to this um, areas and cities where they need to also take take their uh, uh, I mean campaigns too. So we need to also see from them how they intend to to tackle all of these issues that has to do with I mean our attitude, the human attitude. I mean they need to offer leadership. It is beyond telling people don't put your waste. On, 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 the, on, on the roadside and all of that, you need to also ensure there is enforcement. Beyond the policies, beyond all the talks, there must be enforcement. We have all the laws in this country, but where we have issues is enforcement. How do we enforce all of this to, to, to ensure that we do not have a repeat of this? In the, in the my, my issue particularly with the presidential candidates was that, you see, climate change has two levels. Um, you have the global climate change issue, which affects all of us in the world, which relates to let us not destroy this planet in which we all live in. Because, I mean, if all of us emit gases, we, we put chemical in the air, we are eventually going to die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. one aspect. But there's the other aspect where it is already having, even having effect right now on us, on our people. Our people are suffering it. You can see the effect of desertification. Some even say that this Boko Haram warfare is a, a battle for resources, a battle of people who have been disenfranchised, who have nothing to live on. You know, so we need to attend to this. You, you have a state like Israel, which has turned desert into very arable land, producing a lot. You, you, you have other countries which are turning disaster into opportunities. So the point I'm making is many of these presidential candidates did not address the issue that affects us. They just went on the global level. Uh, we, we have to first think of our people. Anytime the issue comes that is global, the first thing you do is you address it to yourself, then the global one will come later. I think where we also have issues yes. is uh, to, to look at how our democracy has evolved. We will see that uh, in the last 24 years or thereabouts, we still talk about the same issues of power, of roads, of education, of poverty. I mean, so, so you can imagine the kind of manifestos that some of our, our candidates and their parties have. You, so, I mean, before you even talk about the global issue, we have some primary issues that need to be tend to. So when, when you even bring climate change issues to them, it becomes something that is even bigger than them in some, in some aspects. Because they, what we are even still talking about is how, how to take children, uh, the out-of-school children 
to school, I mean, to, to, to sort security issues. Exactly. So climate, climate and global warming issues is like you are taking them to the tertiary level of, uh, of democracy. <laughs> yeah. Hussein Olanriwaju is next after the break. <laughs>